Hello and welcome to today's uh, Brain Booster. Uh, my name is Alex Waddell, so I'm a Senior Solutions Consultant at VistaView Solutions, and I've been working on SAP Business by Design for quite a number of years now. And today we want to talk to you about uh, a function in the system called Open Item Management. And the, the purpose of this feature is for reconciliation of miscellaneous uh, ledgers. So this is going to be the first in a series to explain this feature. In today's video, we're just going to run through a quick PowerPoint to explain to you what this uh, feature does. And then in some future sessions, we'll uh, walk you through some real life transactions. So to get started, um, I want to look at, first of all, what is the problem we are trying to solve? So when you post into a non-controlled subledger balance sheet account, you need to justify that balance um, that you are carrying forward. And so samples of those types of accounts could be things like prepaids, accruals, payroll clearing, employee advances, loan advances. So essentially anything on your balance sheet, which is not a subledger control account. So conversely, a subledger control account would be accounts payable, accounts receivable, your inventory, your fixed assets. And why wouldn't you use open item management? Because those subledgers already come with all sorts of reports and functionality, which allow you to identify the details of your open transactions. So for example, at any point in time, you could run an open accounts payable or an open accounts receivable report, but um, without using open item management, it's harder to do that to get, let's say, an example of your open employee advances GL account. And that's the example that we have an illustration for below. So this is going to allow you to create a flag on your journal entries. And so in this example, you can see that uh, we are using an employee advance GL account. So in month one, we're going to advance three different employees, some amount of money and we're going to journalize that into the system. So when we enter that, um, that advance, we can do it as one journal entry. We can, with three rows, we can do it as three different journal entries. But for each employee, we will enter some sort of a reference into the open item management field that ties it back to that employee. In the following month, let's assume that only one of those employees, let's say employee two, repaid those funds. Uh, so if we had advanced each of those employees $1,000 each and we refunded $1,000 back, um, we would know that there's a $2,000 balance in that account, but without the open item management, we wouldn't know that it refers to employee one and employee three. So that is a very simple example of how you can use open item management. So once again, recap, why are we doing this? It allows the tagging of items for future matching and clearing. Um, that's really important when you're reconciling accounts that have hundreds or thousands of rows. Allows you to track open items in SAP rather than outside of the system. And if you have worked on you know, large tier one systems, you're probably used to doing those sorts of things in Excel in the past. Um, instead, you can run an open items report directly in the system to justify those true active items in that GL account. And if you don't do this in SAP, then you are likely going to have to do it in Excel or in some other way outside of the system in order to support your auditor's inquiries of that balance. So what are the components to make this process work? Um, non subledger balance sheet account has to be flagged for open item management. You're going to load transactions with an open item reference ID through a journal voucher. We're going to load an opposing transaction uh, using the same method. And typically that does happen in a subsequent period, although it doesn't have to, it could happen in the same period. Then we're going to show you how to run the open item general ledger report to validate uh, the remaining open items and allow you to perform your reconciliation. And then there is an optional feature um, 
that we'll show you how to use, which is the open item management screen, where you can assign or change reference numbers um, or clear things manually that haven't cleared because your reference items didn't match or because you didn't load a reference item. Uh, so there's a way to do that as well. So all of these things we are going to show you in our next up upcoming sessions. And we will also talk a little bit about the limitations. Um, I'll mention them now. We'll talk about them more in those future sessions. But I have already discussed um, that this only applies to what we call those miscellaneous ledgers, not your control subledgers. Uh, two other unfortunate limitations are open items can only be entered through a journal voucher or through the open item management screen. So no loading of references, say, through a payables document. Um, this is unfortunate because, for example, doing an employee advance, if it is through accounts payable, if it's through a payment, um, it would be ideal to load it there. So we will show you some alternatives to that open item management screen, but that's, that's a limitation that you should be aware of. Um, and also open item references cannot be entered through recurring vouchers. Uh, this is another unfortunate limitation because um, if you are drawing down on a loan or something like that, it might be nice to set up you know, a, pre a recurring journal voucher to do that. But unfortunately, that screen does not reference the open item management screen. So uh, I will talk about some um, workarounds for that as well. So this is what we want to discuss today. So please tune in for future sessions to get into more details on this uh, functionality. Thank you.